Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, today I'm going to um, try and create a short video, no promises though, about the Hardy Weinberg equilibrium equation. We're going to talk, this video is just more like going to be about what it's going to be like and some real basic, what it is, and some real basic problems. Uh, I will make another video that kind of goes over some of the practice problems from the worksheet practice. All right, so here's another chance where um, hopefully if you watched the first video that I had you guys on a puzzle, but uh, there's another chance for you guys to experience some math in this um, in biology. So the whole purpose of the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is to identify if evolution has occurred. Hardy-Weinberg equi equilibrium was created by a physicist and a mathematician who basically said if there's none of the factors of, you know, five fingers of evolution, if there's no natural selection, if there's no migration or gene flow, no mutations, no uh, ran completely random mating, and a large population that the uh, alleles, different versions of a trait within a population will stay the same, which means no evolution will occur, assuming we these things, if that, or if that equation basically breaks or is not true, then that means one of these five things are taking effect or multiple of these five things and we have evolution. So basically we see a change in the gene pool over time. So again, let's re let's kind of recap some of this real quick before uh, we keep going here, right? So when I say gene pool, right? I don't literally mean a pool, but it is an easier way to represent it, right? So I got my little pool here. All right, I'm going to be trying to use some drawing tools here, so bear with me here. All right, so um, within any population, so this is the gene, the gene pool for a population. All right, let's just keep it as the gene pool for the population of humans in Dublin. All right, um, and let's do a simple trait, something we did in class. Let's talk about tongue rolling. We know that there are people who can roll their tongues and people who cannot, those poor folks. All right, that's demonstrated by two different alleles, a dominant allele and a recessive allele. So within that population, there are dominant alleles and there are recessive alleles, all right? Now, some people are homozygous dominant, some people are homozygous recessive, some people are heterozygous, because we are diploid, we have two copies, so you're the big R, big R, big R, little R, or little R, little R, but, there's only two copies. There's a dominant and a recessive. All right. So that is our entire gene pool there. All right. So we are, we can either, like I said, we can either be that, that, or that. All right. So depending on how big this gene pool is and how many of each one are going to determine how many or in individuals can be homozygous dominant homozygous, recessive, and, and heterozygous. Quick example, if of the gene pool, 99% of the genes or alleles in that gene pool are dominant, that means there's less likely going to be people that are homozygous recessive. All right. So for example, let's just go with that example here. Let's say 90% uh, are dominant, right? So we have two alleles, right? Let's say 90% in that gene pool are dominant alleles. So if we just put all the alleles together in the population, we put them all together and 90% of them are dominant. That means 10% are recessive, not that many, all right? Now we talk about this in terms of what we call allele frequency, which is just kind of a fancier way of saying this allele frequency is 0.9 for the dominant alleles and is 0 0.1 because 0 0.1 is 10% and uh, 0.9 is 90%. All right, so that's within the gene pool. So if almost all of the uh, alleles within that gene pool are dominant, you're expecting a lot more individuals to be homozygous dominant and more likely to be uh, heterozygous than you would see homozygous recessive, all right? So when we do this, because we're doing this with different traits and different alleles, right? We, we, we don't necessarily use um, 
R and A and B. And so we actually, uh, for the equation, we actually use a, simplif or a simpler uh, or more unified uh, lettering system. So the dominant allele, or what we call the allele frequency, we represent with the letter P. And the gene frequency, or allele frequency, the amount of recessive alleles, we represent with the letter Q. All right. Which means, now if I go down to my genotypes over here, So I had my alleles up here. Now, if I go to my genotypes, big R, big R, that's, pardon my language, but that's PP or P squared. All right, and uh, let's just do the recessive one. Since little r, little r, which we represent little r with a Q, that's QQ or Q squared. Now, heterozygous is a little bit different. If we're talking probability, technically we always write it dominant and the recessive for heterozygous, but it could be big R, little r, or little r, big R, which means it could be either PQ or QP, but they're the same thing. So literally we have either PQ or QP, or basically two PQ, because there's basically two options here, all right? And so this is how we get a lot of our letters when we talk about the alleles, and when we talk a little bit about um, our genotype, or this is all probability too. Um, so what we end up with is we get an equation that looks like this, all right? This is the main equation. When we start doing some practice problems, this is what we want to get to. These are the things we want to solve for. We basically, I'm going to, when we go through the examples here, I'm going to tell you, we want to get this and we want to get this. If I can get one of those, I can solve for the other one. And it should equal 100%. So in the last example, I had 0.9 for P, which means this has to be 0.1 because 90% and 10% has to equal 100%. All right, so that is our freak, or allele frequency. All right, so this is for this is the equation we are or when we're talking about the alleles, the different versions of the different traits. All right, and it should equal 100%. Now, if we want to talk about the genotypes, because we're diploid, we're not just P. If we're homozygous dominant, we are PP. Again, pardon my language. Um, we're actually, it would be P squared, all right? So, um, come on, there we go. So we would get this equation here, which is talking about the genotypes, all right? Where we would have uh, P squared representing the homozygous, or the frequency, again, just the probability. So it's gonna be a decimal, all right? 80.85 is 85%. That's the frequency. The genotype frequency for homozygous dominant is represented by P squared. 2P is for, 2PQ is for heterozygous and Q squared is for homozygous recessive, which should equal one. The number of, uh, the percentage of homozygous traits plus the percentage of heterozygous plus the homozygous re recessive traits should equal 100% because those are basically the three options you can have, all right? And the whole idea of hetero or of Hardy Weinberg is if that gene pool, if we go back to that gene pool at the very beginning, if that changes, if we started with this right here and we started at 90 and 10, and then there's migration and gene flow and mutations and natural selection is taking place, natural or artificial selection is taking place. And we relook at this over thousands of generations later, and this is 0.4, and this is 0.6. We've had a change in the gene pool compared to what was before. Then evolution has occurred. Hardy Weinberg says that you're, it should not change. So if it does change, evolution has occurred. All right, that's how we know evolution has occurred. It's our mathematical way of saying evolution has occurred. So I want to go over kind of like one or two problems of what this kind of look like. 
but they're really just kind of basic problems going and there'll be some uh, a little bit more challenging ones when we go through the practice problems and practice sheet so sorry all right so um, I like these problems here. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of go through, especially through the thinking. That's kind of the big part of this here. All right, so here's the problem. All right, in corn, purple corn or kernels are dominant to yellow. In a random si sample of 100 kernels taken from the population, Hardy Weinberg, it is found that nine are yellow and 91 are purple. All right, so let's think about the hard, the thing you gotta do whether you got this. I wanna get P, I wanna get Q, but I have to start with what I know, all right? If yellow or purple is dominant to yellow, it is saying right here, nine out of 100, that's point, or it's 9%, can't do math, 9% or 0 0.09, that's 9% are yellow, all right? I'm going to use, um, so let's just use, um, we'll use P for purple uh, as our allele. So we are, we know that our, in this case here, nine out of one, our nine out of 100 are homozygous recessive, which means their little P, little P is equal to 9%. Actually, let's not use P because that's going to get confusing with the P and Q. Um, sorry about that. Um, let's use, uh, bu, 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 bu. let's just use A. That's classic. All right. Little A, little A is equal to 0 0.09. And we know that homozygous recessive, that is basically Q squared. All right. So I know Q squared is equal to 0 0.09. I said earlier, if I can get P or I can get Q, the rest of this is all easy. It's just algebra. Well, I want to know in this question, what is the frequency of the yellow allele? Well, the yellow allele, right? So the dominant allele, that's big A, and the recessive would be little a. I want to know this right here, right? Which this is P and this is Q. All right, so to find Q, I would just square root both sides, right? The square root of 0 0.09, I believe I'm doing the math real quickly in my head, is it, is it that one? Yay, I was right. Doing my math real quick. The square root of that, and so the square root of 0 0.09 is 0.3, or basically what it's saying is 30% of the gene pool is recessive, all right? Let's do the next question. All right, so let's, uh, let's let's clear this. Let's start over here a little bit here. All right, this is saying the recessive allele B, okay, again, let's go with what we know, that B is going to be Q, right, has a frequency of 0.8 in the population. So Q is equal to 0.8. So 80% of the gene pool is made up of recessive alleles. That's a lot. Remember, dominant doesn't mean more. All right. I mean, the error of a population of crabs. What is the frequency of the homozygous dominant? All right. So what I want to know is P squared. Because remember, homozygous dominant, that's big A, big A, represented by P and P or P squared. All right. So I'm trying to find, I have Q and I want P squared. Okay, well, let's let's think this through. All right, I gotta use the two equations that I have. All right, well, P plus Q equals one. So P plus 0.8 equals one, right? That was one of the equations, which means P is equal to 0.2. All right, but I don't want P, I want P squared, all right? Yeah, because I want homozygous dominant. All right, so now I need to find, I would just square both sides. All right, which is going to be equal to, I'm disappointed in myself, I can't do the math in my head. 
0 0.04. That's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure so I didn't look stupid. Oh. Yay. That was right. All right. I'm going to do one more. Uh, all right. So this one's a little bit trickier. Let's clear this. All right. Purple, or again, purple is dominant to, purple is dominant to yellow. So this is going to be big A, little a. Out of a, oh, wait, this, oh, okay, never mind. I think this was the same question. It is the same question. Hmm. Um, anyway, let's say I wanted to find, let's just use the same question, but this time I want to find out how many are. All right, I'm going to do this one because this didn't randomize very well. All right, so uh, it is found that nine kernels. So we already know that Q squared is equal to 0 0.09, all right? And I want to know the home heterozygous, which is the way I find heterozygous is 2PQ, right? P for the dominant, Q for the recessive, all right? So I need Q, I need P, all right? Q I can find by taking the square root of both of those, right? Which we did earlier, all right? Once I know Q, right? So once I know the square root of 0 0.09, which is 0.3, that means P has to be equal to 0.7, right? P has to be equal to 0.7. So then it would be two times 0 0.3, uh, 0.3 times 0.7, right? Which would be 0.42. Let me make sure I'm right from that one because I don't want to give you the wrong answer. Yeah, I was right. Or basically saying 42% of the population would be heterozygous, would be heterozygous if this was the gene pool given. All right, that's what we would expect, assuming there's no mutations. All right, I hope that helped a little bit. Just understand what P and Q are. This can be tricky. Do not hesitate to question me or uh, send me questions or try and set up a conference with me and I can go or I got my big whiteboard we can do a couple of the practice problems together so all right otherwise um, good luck and uh, may the science be with you